Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we're going to be bringing you more mods and tools and add-ons. Um, I really hope that you guys are enjoying these series um, and if you are enjoying the content from this channel please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really does help me out quite a lot. If you're interested in further supporting the channel you can check out my Patreon link in the description below and consider a small donation. I would be greatly appreciative. Um, these content does uh, take quite a bit to make and uh, any little bit of help definitely helps all right so as I said today we're going to be going over a couple of different mods and uh, add-ons primarily the mods are going to be aircraft related and then a couple of tools uh, that I found that you guys may enjoy let's go ahead and start off our showcase today now the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually a website called flight sim.2 um, I have not seen this one before. I actually stumbled across it just the other day by accident, and it's a very handy uh, website. And unfortunately, I think it's actually a little bit better upkept than the um, uh, Microsoft Add-ons.org that we were seeing before. The add-ons seem to be much more frequent as well as much more up to date. You have everything from aircraft liveries broken down by aircraft, so this makes it a little bit easier than downloading a single package. Um, as you get to pick and choose the liveries that you want. So here are just a few from the A320, and they have just about everything. We can take a look at the Bonanza. You can see here there's quite a bit to choose from to sort of mix up the sim and change up the scenery a little bit for you guys. Speaking of the DA62, this will be one of our add-ons that we'll discuss today. But again, you have cockpit interiors. Now with the cockpit interiors, you want to be cautious as if you are using mods like the G1000, G3000 improvement modifications, they may not be compatible with that. Um, as both of them, I do believe, have textures involved on their own. However, if you're not using those uh, updates, which I highly recommend you do, and we'll be talking about those in a minute, um, at the end of the video um, if you're not using those you guys can um, definitely use the cockpit mods and it's not to say that they're, none of them are compatible just be cautious and understand what the file structure by the way if there are momentary pauses in the video chances are I am hacking up a lung yes my lovely daughter brought home yet another little gift for the family from school and we are all sitting here battling a nice cold once again so please forgive any interruptions or any sick noises if you will all right, so moving on, let's go ahead and talk about what we're here on this page to discuss. Let me see if I can track it down real quick. I'm pretty sure that I saved the link directly to it. Yep, I did. And by the way, for Sim.2 or Flight Sim 2.2, you do need to register in order to download most of the um, files that are here. However, there is no penalty to registration. There's no financial cost or anything like that, no requirements. They, I think they just want to track what the user base is. So. But here is the DA62 performance mod, and I'll go ahead and uh, give you guys a second to pause the screen and take a look at these. And now let's go ahead and take a look at what the aircraft looks like. So as we saw here at the start of the video, here is the DA62. Now forgive me, I'm terrible with the cameras. I need to set up some sort of orbit. I'm not the greatest at doing these showcases. I haven't done a whole lot of them, so still learning on my end, but you guys get to see the aircraft. As you can see, the overall texturing is keeping up with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 standards. Everything looks absolutely fantastic. Same thing with inside the cockpit, no complaints. Uses the G1000 suite. Again, there is a mod or a, well, let's call it a performance modification for the G1000 and G3000 suites. Um, links will be in the description below. I have discussed these before, but they actually increase the uh, performance and features that are available in the G1000 and 3000 avionic suites. The cockpit looks absolutely freaking amazing, and it's a fun little plane to fly. I was actually forced to fly this one on a VFR uh, tutorial I was doing last week um, because the Mooney, unfortunately, is um, causing a crash to desktop at the moment. I'm not quite sure why we're cautioning there, but whatever. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next aircraft in the showcase. Next on our list, we have the G36 Beechcraft Bonanza. This is another aircraft that has been giving some quite good attention um, as it has received multiple performance updates through the fret and uh, their efforts to increase the features and availability of the G36. The G36 is sticking with the general aviation um, genre if you will and allows for a very fun flight experience if you're interested in low wing aircraft. Um, she's fast, she's fun, she's actually quite maneuverable given the, what she's designed for. And uh, unfortunately, it still does run the um, G1000 suite as we've seen in most of the um, 
MSFS aircraft. However, again, coupling with the G1000 upgrade mod, um, it is an absolute blast to fly. So once again, let's go ahead and bring up the update notes so you guys can take a peek and see if these features are something that you are interested in adding to your flight simulator. And to give you once again a quick tour of the outside, I'm going to go ahead and just use the showcase for this or the external for this one. You guys can see the texturing once again, reflections and everything keeps very much up to par with much of the other um, aircraft in the simulator. Now, again, one of the other cool things about this one is the um, included in the latest version is a lighting update so again it's not just the systems but we're also getting some of the other options as well you can also find links directly below here to the g1000 update um, that i was just mentioning by working title all right guys let's go ahead and move on to our next aircraft next on our list here stepping away from general aviation into private charter we have the cessna citation cj4 this is one that has been seen in a couple of my videos already. However, I felt it was uh, necessary to give it some love and attention here on this one as well. This plane is an absolute joy to fly. It's a lot of fun. There's no auto throttle in this one, so it's hands-on all the way through um, each time that you make any kind of changes that requires a throttle adjustment. However, it still comes with a fully functioning autopilot, ILS, and basic navigation instruments. The cockpit is extremely well laid out and very well detailed and uh, a nice step away from the G1000 and 3000 suites. The MCD or FMS, however you want to call it, um, is also receiving updates um, as time moves forward, as well as the interactive checklists and basic operation of the aircraft. Again, texturing on par, not much to be said there. Um, I highly recommend this if this is something that you guys are interested in and in stepping away from the general aviation, but maybe not quite wanting to move up to commercial aircraft. All right. And I'll go ahead and bring up the patch notes for you guys so you can see exactly what the up, uh, update currently brings. The next aircraft on our list today is the King Air 350i, sticking with the private charter aircraft once again. Something in between the big commercial aircraft and a little bit above the general aviation. I haven't gotten a whole lot of time in this aircraft, but the little that I have gotten to spend, she's a lot of fun, very fast, um, and quite easy to land. I've actually enjoyed landing at one of the more, uh, more so than some of the other aircraft that I've gotten to fly. Um, I tend to do a lot more time in this aircraft as I recently discovered its mod, um, and highly recommend it to you guys as well without having a whole lot of experience into it. Once again, the cockpit, pretty similar to some of the other aircraft that we've seen. However, it does have its own distance or differences. Very well laid out and uh, obviously extremely detailed. Let you guys just take a quick peek. Seems a lot busier than some of the other aircraft that we fly. I love the throttle quadrant here. And again, cabin area right up to par with everything else that we see. All right, and now let's bring up the patch notes for your review. And finally on our list today is another little tool that I just recently discovered called Little Nav Map. Now this Little Nav Map allows you to, or is a tool used for creating your flight plans, I believe both IFR and VFR. It comes with very thorough documentation broken down step by step and integrates well with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 versions are, I believe, still in beta and still have a few bugs here and there. But all in all, it's in a very impressive piece of equipment um, that I'm looking forward to learning further. Again, I have very limited experience with it thus far as I only found this a day or two ago. Um, but thus far, I can tell that you can start your flight plans right down to your parking location. Um, draw your flight plans out, set your routes, your altitudes. It gives you in a suggested altitude and gives you the required altitude for uh, object avoidance, whether or not you be you know, flying across the terrain or across open water, it doesn't matter. Uh, if there's a mountain at 8,000 feet, it sets your altitude up about 10,000 feet to make sure that you can maintain your clearance. 
Um, you can do custom waypoint names that also do transpose into the sim once imported. The only ones that get affected, I believe, are top of descent and top of climb. Uh, they remain obviously named as usual. Um, but I highly recommend you guys check this out, especially if you're into VFR flight planning. One of the things that I have not yet gotten to go complete but have seen that you can do is create air, aircraft uh, performance charts. Basically you select an aircraft within NavMap and you can make sure that the performance uh, numbers match what the real aircraft does and then it will help you calibrate things like required fuel, airspeed, cruise, etc. Help you with your weights and balances. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video folks. I hope that you guys are continuing to enjoy these. Again, if you guys are liking this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help me out a lot. Um, every little bit goes a long way if you get what I mean. Alright guys, I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys in the next one.